downtown was an absolute and utter adventure. For a child, it was Alice in Wonderland. I could see Cleveland in the distance. It just looked like a dream city. It was because it was an event. You went downtown, you spent the day downtown. As a little kid, everything was magical, everything was huge, everything was bigger than life. Downtown was the land of Oz, where you can, instead of seeing it on a screen, you could actually go into it. The minute you saw those big buildings looming in the distance, it was like Oz. Public Square, Euclid Avenue, East 9th Street, Main Street in Akron, all vital places for business and entertainment in Northeast Ohio. But there was a time when these places were magical and each holds special memories of the way we shop. From the 1920s through the 1960s, it was the golden era of downtown shopping. That was before the heyday of malls and interstates, a time when downtown was the place to be, to eat, to shop, to see and be seen. It was an event. Um, you would, well, we always took the bus downtown. So, I mean, by the time you took the bus downtown, you made a day of it. You'd go from store to store. We'd always eat. I mean, it was just, I don't know, much more of an adventure, much more exciting than going to the mall. Neighborhood stores, by their size and by the fact that they were usually individual stores, were limited in the merchandise that they could offer this high style that they could offer. So yes, you had to come downtown. Downtown was a magnet. Downtown was, was, was downtown. I mean, you, you, you lived in the suburbs and you thought of downtown as, uh, as the place to go to for eating, for entertainment, and for shopping. Oh, it, it was a wonderful feeling because they had all the different stores in downtown Akron and they were always beautifully decorated and that was what they would call a family affair. Everybody would go downtown and it was called window shopping. You had to plan the day. You didn't just jump into the car and go to the mall like we do today. And part of the magic was just getting there. Your journey downtown took you through different neighborhoods, past industrial sites, and into this world of one-of-a-kind places to eat to see first-run movies and stage shows and to shop at stores with everything imaginable. Some people drove, but a lot more took the bus, the rapid transit, or the streetcar. Come down from Collinwood in one of those wonderful streetcars, uh, that in itself was worth, <laughs> worth everything else. Special was you got on a streetcar, it cost a penny. If you wanted to transfer at certain places, it was free. Otherwise, it cost another penny. Your mother took you by the hand and you marched you down to uh, the Bailey Company or the May Company. But it was hard getting them cars started in the morning with the coal. And they were hard. I used to start at 5 o'clock in the morning. And the fellow got on the car once and he said, why ain't the stove going? I said, if you could get it going, do it. He walked up, he'd come back, he said, I'm sorry, I'll never say anything more. One of my assistants used to say, I'm embarrassed to say that one of my biggest memories of coming down at Christmas time in Cleveland is the, the, the smell of buses, because I used to come with my mother and grandmother and we'd be on buses, so that's part of my Christmas memory. I still recall when I was 11 years old, I was finally permitted to go downtown by myself. I uh, used my allowance and uh, paid the bus fare and went downtown and it, it was sort of, you know, coming out, coming of age. The favorite memories were, you're 12 years old, your parents let you loose. You get on a bus, you're going downtown, you're going down 25th Street and everything, you're in the bus and then you get to go downtown and you're all by yourself, going out to get some lunch, going out to get records and everything. It was the only place to go. The, the, the the suburbs as you and I know them today, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't why Cleveland Heights existed. Cleveland Heights existed because it was where you lived when you weren't downtown. Shaker Heights existed on, on the string of that railroad that took everybody downtown. A lot of us lived through the Depression years, and we didn't have all the distractions and the material things that people have now. So to go downtown 
and to maybe have a few dollars in your purse when you, that you could spend it was a big deal, you know, it was exciting. You're just in awe of the, you know, the size of the buildings and, you know, and everything that was going on downtown, all the people down here. Uh, it was just a fun place to be. It was fun, because before you went down there, you made sure that you look like downtown. Oh, this is too big. Look this way. It was a day. It was a mini vacation. The whole family was scrubbed, mercilessly cleaned up, put in their best clothes. You went downtown. You were on your best manners. You were supposed to behave. Your hair was combed. Uh, you were washed up. And maybe you had to you even took a, you took a bath that morning. Even if you had taken one that night, you washed up or took a bath if you knew you were going downtown. Cleanliness was next to godliness. There's no question about that. But you were all duded up to go downtown. That was almost like going to church. Okay, when you would go downtown. My mother has a picture that's been in her wallet forever. Every time she opens her wallet, I see this picture. And it's my brother, my sister, her, and myself. Some fella came up with the camera, took our picture, and handed her a card. I guess a woman or a female couldn't come downtown without her gloves, white gloves. You had to dress up. You couldn't come downtown casually. When you went downtown, you did wear a hat or this little fur number like you just got from Russia. And then you also wore gloves. Back then, whenever you went anywhere, you always wore gloves, a hat, and carried a purse. You'd put them on and you would pull the fingers down like this to get them to fit. My daughter especially loves these chartreuse. Here are some blue ones. You know, if you, if you went downtown, you wore these. You didn't wear them up your arm. You put them on, whoopsie, wrong hand. You would put them on like this, and then, and then you would crunch them, okay? And they always matched. They had to match something in your outfit. These were a pair of my Easter gloves one year. And they were just wonderful, wonderful to wear. There are a lot of women out there who may watch this and say, you never felt dressed unless you wore your hat and your gloves when you went downtown shopping. I, I remember my father uh, telling me that, uh, well, when you walk down Euclid Avenue, you stand up straight and you stick out your chest. You don't just slump going down Euclid Avenue. After you got all dressed up, you needed to decide where to go. And there were plenty of great choices. Halley's would be the Cleveland equivalent of Zach's Fifth Avenue. Higby's uh, uh, would be not Saks, but would try to be close to a Bloomingdale's, would sort of be a, a, a little notch below, but, but right in there. May Company would be more in the league of a Macy's or a Gimbo's. In those days, at the high end, uh, there was the Halley Brothers Company, and that was known as the carriage store. Uh, there were doormen. Uh, uniformed livery doorman uh, uh, on the Euclid side and the uh, Huron Road side. Uh, probably the next level down would have been uh, the Higby Company, May Company, uh, Sterling Lindner and, and uh, William Taylor were all pretty much clustered as the next level. I would say Higby's at, in those days was immediately below the Halley Brothers Company. And then Bailey's was the store for everybody I mean for uh, it was a uh, more of a budget operation in Akron downtown shoppers had similar choices if you would just stand there at the corner uh, of State Street and watch the people go back and forth uh, they would be going to Polsky and then they go over to O'Neill's and that's what you saw lots of people going across the street from one store to the other Polsky was uh, was more of uh, a designer type of uh, merchandise. Uh, O'Neill's was noted for bargains and remnant days and warehouse sales. Uh, that was the difference between O'Neill's and, and Polsky. We had another sh uh, department store, Jaeger's, and uh, Jaeger's was kind of the uh, trendy place, the uh, little uh, more expensive, uh, an older looking building that was more like the place for the establishment to go to shop. Uh, my mother always felt comfortable with O'Neill's. I felt comfortable with O'Neill's. <laughs>
Downtown Cleveland and Akron had plenty of other shops for you to trek through to find everything from the strange to the sublime. How about all those great dime stores like Kresge's, Grant's, and Woolworth's? It was great. <laughs> I remember shopping in there a lot because that's what I could afford. It was um, aisles and aisles of notions and just anything you could want, you could find there from thread to bras everything all in one place and popcorn too it was just not a little cheesy store it was a whole big bustling uh, you know I don't know it was a kind of little mini community and it was like there was one place after another to go through so you go to a dime store you go to the music store Euclid had stores all the way down it that you could go to and Richmond Brothers here you could go down to Richmond Brothers and get a suit with two pairs of pants for $18.50 Later on, they raised the price to twenty-two fifty. I also remember I.J. Fox when they were downtown. Um, that was at, uh, closer to May Company, so it was further down the street. And they had really nice clothing. It was like two or three floors. There was an elevator operator. And um, they also had, that's where they had the furs and the leathers, coats and things like that. Those who continued on up Euclid Avenue toward Halley's often made a point of walking by the window of Beatty's jewelry for one special reason. Just that he always had the uh, jewel, uh, the tiny jewels in, a, in some kind of a design. It would be a butterfly or it would be a, the American flag at the 4th of July. It's a Cleveland shopping tradition that's been going on since the early 20th century. Lucy Beatty does it now, but her grandfather started it before World War I and it was her father, Milton Beatty, who crafted and carried the designs to the front window for more than 70 years. He passed away two years ago at 97, and he was working till the last week of his life down here doing those designs. And all of that time, too, he was the one who carried it back and forth because he used to say, now, you young fellas, your hands shake, he said. So you better let me carry that out, put it in the front window. So we used to roll our eyes, but stand aside when Milton was putting the design in the front window. Beatty's has been in this Euclid Avenue location since 1932. A journey here is a trip back to that golden era of downtown shopping. People will come in today and say, oh my goodness, I was in here 45 years ago. And you know why this little room is just exactly the same. It has changed all, and indeed it hasn't. On the other end of the spectrum was the Bonds Clothes Building at East 9th and Euclid, which ushered in the sci-fi look to downtown Cleveland. And there was a, what I would call a flying stairway from the second floor, it went up to the third floor, but the stairway was open, there were no walls on either side, and I had never really seen any uh, structure do a stairway like that, and I thought, boy, for a store, what a great look. Most people were happy with the things they bought downtown, but not every purchase was a good one. For Easter, I should say, he bought a new suit. One Sunday, it was Sunday, we went to church for Easter Sunday. My father's sitting there, and he found a thread, and he pulls the thread, the next thing you know, his sleeve fell out of his suit. And that ended my father's buying uh, at Bonds. Uh, there were stores on St. Clair, was called Capital Clothes, where my parents took me and I got a suit, a coat, and a cap. Nobody wore it. A cap, at least in our neighborhood, for 13 bucks. And if you hit a rainstorm before you got on a streetcar, the pants were already up to your knees. How about the nut house right next to the May Company? They would pump out the smell of those roasted nuts through this vent out into the street to draw you in. The roasters aren't there anymore. They've been replaced by raw sushi. But in Akron, you can still get fresh roasted nuts and that wonderful smell at the peanut shop on Main Street. 